the people who listen to the podcast, I've told this story probably a dozen times. They're probably tired of hearing it because the podcast is called Roots Music Rambler, and it's about exploring artists and where the roots of their love of music comes from. Not just Roots music, but their roots. And it's more than just what musical artists impacted you. It's like, well, where were you raised and how did the place impact you and how did your family and your education and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I've told them that my roots for my music, my love of music, because I'm not talented at all. I can't play anything. I can barely sing. And and that's a stretch. (laughs) But my roots come from the living room of Larry and Cheryl Webster. Because when I was six, seven, eight, nine years old, Friday nights at your all's house was picking and grinning, and I'd come and run around with Scott and Mickey Todd and whoever else was there. But I would always sit and listen to y'all play. This is, I guess this is more of a thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> those Friday nights are basically a burden on Cheryl because she couldn't keep her house very clean because you know how it was. That place was full of smokers and, and uh, things, and every week is the same things. But we kind of willed ourselves into the old time music scene by doing that, forced ourselves into it, inserted ourselves. P- other people have imposter syndrome. We are imposters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but we, as you know, we had some of the best, simply by being where we were, we had some of the best uh, old time and bluegrass traditional music musicians in the country yeah through getting to know all these people we're able to expose our progeny to that a whole lot uh-huh okay go for it i'll start with i grew up in crane nest kentucky which is knox county okay i did not learn until i was an adult that my little community was a cherokee village <laughs> okay my mother hummed songs when she did Housework. She did Carter family songs. Mm -hmm. Hank Williams was the big star then, so I got to hear Hank Williams. (laughs) And the most scandalous thing that ever happened was Jerry Lee Lewis married his 12-year-old cousin, Mm -hmm. according to my mother. (laughs) My mother's maiden name is Scott. She grew up across the creek from her uncle Green Scott, who is my grandfather's brother. They all came from Harlan County. My cousin Daryl Scott. Oh, I know who he is. Wrote You'll Never Leave Harlan Alive, which is about mine and his great grandparents. Wow. Green Scott, his grandfather, married Mary Bergen from Harlan County, who was a great musician. She really brought the music to that side of the family. So all of her children sang, and my mother grew up with a mother who was sick most of her life, and her oldest brother, Cecil, and her oldest sister, Hazel, were taken to Berea to go to high school because there was no high school there in Knox County at the time. When Cecil got to Berea, he decided to hop a train, which he did. He hoboed for the next at least 15 years. Wow. Nobody approved of his lifestyle. Of course. But both <laughs> sets of families could not wait for him to return because while he was out hoboing, he picked up all the new songs. Oh. And he brought all the music back. Oh, wow. He played a guitar. And I grew up hearing it. I just grew up hearing it and loved it. Then I met Larry, who was totally into the folk scene (laughs) at the time. (laughs) When was this? About 1967 or 68. So hippie generation. Yeah, of course, hippiness come to uh, Kentucky a little bit later than other places. (laughs) But... um, Back in Lexington in the late 60s, they had some, it was the folk era, and they had some unbelievably good uh, folk music shows on there that played the raw, old, ragged, really mountain stuff. It wasn't just the the uh, Kingston Trio and the Mary 
Peter, Paul, and Mary faux, faux folk. Faux folk, okay. Faux folk. I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> All right. Real folk. And uh, that's where I really realized the, the power of the old traditional music. The, the folk musics were smooth, but they didn't have power. But that, uh, when I found the origins of that, and the, that's where I got attracted to yeah. it. One thing we both had in common, we grew up listening to WCKY Cincinnati 1 Ohio. Okay. Our families listened to the music there. And Larry, Larry had a family that had records. Oh, Larry had TV. He got to see some stuff. On. My family got a TV after I left. Okay. Larry. <laughs> Larry had TV. Larry had TV, and they, uh, I think I'm correct, and they watched the Lawrence Welk show together ever, whenever Lawrence Welk came on. And Larry also had a stepfather of Italian descent in Ohio, and they got to go up there in the summer where I think he was exposed to even more mm -hmm. music. So, Larry, where did you grow up? I grew up uh, on the Kentucky River, uh, close to Frankfort, about 20 miles up the, from the mouth of the Kentucky River, a place called Owen County, mm -hmm. rugged tobacco country. After we moved to eastern Kentucky, and everybody in Owen County thought we'd moved to the end of the earth, <laughs> all, the, all the people here started going back there to deer hunt yeah. Yeah. to get away from it all. <laughs> That's the way life is. So were you uh, were you in Oakton? No, that went to school there. <laughs> the uh, he grew up in Grass. I was nine miles out. Okay, it was quite a interesting little place. There was a person in Owen County who was not a Baptist. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> one and they frowned on music, let alone good music. Oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> For the, for the people listening, I say Oncton, it's Owenton, but in, if you're from there, you say Oncton. Well, the Rose Brothers from Owen County made a little money, and they went out to Las Vegas one time to one of them shows, and the comedian came around, kind of joking with the audience. Yeah. He asked one of the Rose Brothers, where are you from? And Rose said, Lusby's Mill, Kentucky. <laughs> and the comedian left to go trick with somebody else. His brother said, look like you could have told him, Owenton ain't nobody knows where Lusby's Mill is. <laughs> <laughs>